Welcome to the raw and uncensored ambitious podcast. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh, yeah, here I am, the original H-B-I-C, Katie motherfucking Boyd. It's been a hot minute, hot minute. Yes, I took the motherfucking summer off. You know why I took the motherfucking summer off? Because I am a badass bitch. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am rich. I am that bitch. And you know what? I was burnt the fuck out. And the reason why I was burnt the fuck out, because I had all of these epiphanies over the last couple months. I went to Portugal for three weeks. I lived my best four seasons life. I ate. I drank. I went to the motherland. And I had so much downtime to actually really dig deep That's what I tell all y'all in Ambitious Land, right? Take some time and go inside and figure out why the fuck you're feeling like a bag of smashed assholes. And I did. And it changed my mother fucking life. And what I realized is that I was burnt out because I was not being my true authentic self. Let me explain. Before COVID happened, I was literally living my best life. I was in shape. I had a beautiful body. I was gorgeous. I was in love with my husband. I was working out every day. I was doing all of my daily rituals, which in the ambitious world we call ambituals. I was getting ready to launch my book, Ambitious. I was going on a world tour. I was doing high paid speaking engagements. I was making multi seven figures a year. I was literally like living what I call the ambitious lifestyle. And then, you know, that little thing happened and I just started feeling so bad for humanity. And I literally did not realize this until my, one of my healers that I work with and my, one of my coaches said, Katie, you just led thousands of women through a global pandemic with literally no fucking directions, no rule book, no playbook. And then I'm like, no wonder why I feel so fucking crazy. And I wasn't being my see you next Tuesday self. Like if I'm telling all y'all to be your, you know, bitchy selves and be in your power and all these things, and I am literally like coddling people because I'm just like in like fear, spiral, survival mode. Like, obviously, duh, that's why I felt terrible. So as you guys know, I took a couple of months off and I feel rejuvenated. I just feel like my old self and I'm ready to party. And I hope that you motherfucking bitches out there are ready to party too. But I'm going to tell you, like, my podcasts going forward are going to be Katie motherfucking Boyd on a warpath. Okay, because there's no other fucking options, guys. Like, we are not getting off this fucking planet alive. So, what I realized, and I had this conversation with my husband the other day while we were having coffee, because every morning part of my habituals is my husband and I have coffee together and we chit we chit chat about our lives and our goals and our dreams and our aspirations and kind of like what we're working on, how we can support each other, like little things that will make each other's life easier. And he said to me, you know, Katie, he's like, you got really soft over COVID. And I was like, I know, dude. And I don't want to be that way anymore. Like I like myself so much more when I'm like hardcore and I'm raw and I'm real. And he said to me, um, you know, what did, what's your why? Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Cause you don't have to work. You don't have to podcast. You don't have to show up. You don't have to do any of this shit because I'm already a rich bitch. If I wanted to take the rest of my life off, I could. But I know that that's not really what I want to do. Like, that's not what feels right to me. Yeah, I like to have a good time and I like to travel and I like to take time off and all that stuff. But I just I just would feel like a lump of shit if I wasn't showing up and doing the work. And he said, well, what's your why? And I said, I really just desire to help people. And he goes, you know what, Katie, I'm going to stop you there right now. 
you were not placed on this earth to help other people. You were placed on this earth to help yourself. And you were placed on this earth to have God experience himself through you. And I was like, what did you just say? So he was saying, yeah, you know, Wallace Waddles, who wrote a book about money, it's very old. Um, it's called The Science of Getting Rich. You guys can actually listen to it on YouTube, audiobook. You can buy, still buy the book. And it's one of my favorite books. And I totally forgot Wallace Waddles said this shit. And he said, you know, pretty much, and I'm, you know, just summing it up, pretty much your life is about allowing God to live and experience what he has created through you. So if you are rich and healthy and wealthy and beautiful, and you have high vibrational relationships and you have fierce boundaries and you have divine connection to spirit and you have the home of your dreams and you get to see the world and travel and experience like a 1% life, that is what God intended for all of us. But the problem is, and Wallace Waddles didn't say this, Katie motherfucking Boyd is saying this, the problem is, is so many of you out there are motherfucking pussies. You are scared. You are in a fear spiral. You're afraid of success. You're afraid to go inside and actually do the work. You are just a big fraidy cat. And I'm telling you right now that you will never, ever experience an ambitious life if you are in a constant state of paralyzing fear. And part of coming out of paralyzing fear is to figure out why the fuck you're the way that you are in the first place. And to realize that you have no self-worth, you have no self-confidence, and you have no self-esteem, and you are surrounded by a bunch of motherfucking pussy-ass bitches that are just blowing smoke up your fucking asshole all the day, telling you that you're beautiful, and you're special, and you're a snowflake, and, you know, like, body positivity, and, you know, only, you know, money isn't everything, and all this shit. You know who says... You know who says this shit? I'll tell you who says this shit. You know who says money isn't everything? You know who who says it? Broke ass bitches. Broke ass hoes say money isn't everything. You know who said it's okay to be fat, body positivity, it's okay? Fat people. I know y'all are going to come for me, but I don't give a fuck because if you send me emails that are rude, I just fucking delete them and laugh anyways because I know that I'm fucking triggering you because I'm speaking the truth. Broke people talk about money isn't everything. Fat people talk about body positivity and they say like, oh, like treat yourself, treat yourself. You know who says treat yourself? Losers. You know who says, oh, just take a day off? Bums. You know who says like, oh, it's not that bad. People who are fucking never going to make anything of themselves for the rest of their lives and they just are like crabs in a bucket pulling you into their fucking shit pit so that you can all just lay and roll around like piggies in the pig pen, slopping fucking shit all over you with diarrhea all over your face, rusty fucking trombones, okay? Dirty Sanchez fucking mustaches. Come on. Enough is a fucking enough. And so I am not here anymore and I am no longer available for weak ass coded language. I am going to show up here week after week and I'm going to spit fucking truth. And if you don't like it, you don't have to fucking listen. But I promise you, if you really take what I'm saying, even if it triggers you, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, even if you get fucking angry with me and you put into play the things that I'm saying, your life will be ambitious. You will live the rest of your life, the best of your life. And you know what? Maybe you are not meant for greatness. Maybe you were born to be a motherfucking mediocre average basic bitch, and that's okay. Not everyone is supposed to have a 1%, 2% life. Happiness and wealth and beauty and health and all the things that I talk about in Ambitious, the six life makers, those things are not given. They are fucking earned. They're not given, they're earned. So you need to earn these things. You need to put in the work. You need to get fucking out of your comfort zone or not, 
or not, or keep thinking that there's time. Keep standing in the corner and fucking spanking your monkey. I don't give a fuck. But get the fuck out of the way of people like me who know that they're meant for more, who know that their birthright from God is to live a 1% life. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Toot, toot, beep, beep. Get the fuck out of my way. Okay? So today I'm going to talk about self worth. It is the basis of everything I teach. If you don't have self worth, you have nothing. And the biggest problem with self worth is our whole lives, we say we're going to do something from the time that we're little children. It could be like, I'm going to get an A on my test, or I'm going to get a goal you know, in my soccer game, or I'm going to like win a blue ribbon on this piece of art that I created. And then we don't follow through. And we start that at a young age. And then as we get older, this mediocrity and this basic average bullshit just seeps into every crack and every crevice and every nook and every cranny of our fucking energetic auric fields. And then what happens is there's no self-worth muscle that's been built over time because you haven't been disciplined. You haven't been living outside of your comfort zone. You've been surrounding yourself with a bunch of other basic ass bitches that tell you it's okay to be mediocre. It's okay to be fat. It's okay to be broke. It's okay to not have all the things that God literally created for us to experience. But you think for some fucking weird reason that like you're an oddball and that God made all this beauty and all this incredibleness for everyone else except you. And then as you get older, you just become more and more and more basic and mediocre and and you just become a fucking loser. And then you just become an amoeba and then you just become an oxygen thief. You know, I, I'm just I'm just sick of it, guys. I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, I know what my bank account looks like. I know what my home looks like. I know what my my body and my health is like. I know what my divine connection to spirit is like because every fucking day I get up and I do the do over and over and over and over again. And I know why I'm here and I know what my goals are and I know what I desire to achieve. And then I reverse engineer from that and I don't let myself get distracted. And y'all motherfuckers are just showing up every day in this total distraction mode. And you're like, I don't know why I have anxiety, Ab, because you're sitting down to do a project and you're looking at your phone 300 fucking times to see who's texting you, who's posting on your Facebook, who just liked your picture on Instagram, what fucking TikToker is like, you know, doing mukbang or whatever the fuck that they call it. You're in a constant state of distraction because at the end of the day, you don't even feel worthy enough to not be distracted so that you can actually achieve your hopes, dreams, goals, aspirations. So the first thing I'm going to say to you, and this is one of the basic things that I teach in my Ambitious Academy and in my A28P, which is the Ambitious in 28 Day Protocol. The basis for everything I teach is this, and this is my direct quote from myself, and I want you to say it with me. So let me say it first and we'll say it together. My word is law and my self-worth depends on it. Say it with me. My word is law and my self-worth depends on it. Why is my word law and my self-worth depends on it? Because every time you say, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, right? And I see this all the time because I coach thousands of women from all across the globe. I hear, okay, it's Monday. I'm going to do all my morning ambituals. So that could be your ambitious abundance affirmation. That could be your blessing. That could be setting your intentions for the day. That could be anything on your bitch list, which we're going to talk about in another podcast. That could be exercise, meditation, drinking a big old glass of warm water with lemon juice in it, taking your supplements, right? Doing your Palo Santo, maybe pulling some cards for yourself for the day, getting some messages from spirit or your guardian angels or your guides or whatever. And all of this is outlined, obviously, in A Bitch's Academy and in A28P. And you say this, right? You say, okay, this is what I'm going to do for my morning ambituals. This is what I'm going to do for my exercise. This is how I'm going to eat today. And then these are the things that I know that if I get these things accomplished today, I'm just going to get that much closer to my best, most ambitious life. And then by noontime, you're on the couch 
with a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and you're watching fucking Maury Povich, you are not the father, paternity tests, and you are like just glazed over, just fucking slack jaw, bovine face, just blah, and you haven't done shit. And then that night you you go and you lay in bed and you go like, oh my God, my life is such bullshit. I am a loser. I can't stick to anything I say I'm going to stick to. And every fucking day you live that groundhog bullshit. You chip away at your self-worth until one day you wake up and you're like, what's the fucking point of trying? And 98% of the human population, unfortunately, at this moment is in the same boat as what the fuck is the point? And that is why we are so distracted. That is why there's poverty in the world. That is why we are taken advantage of and we're taken for granted and we're depressed and we have anxiety and we're not, you know, having the relationships that we desire and we have no fucking boundaries and we say yes when we really mean no and we have no spiritual divine connection and our house is a hoarder house and everything's dirty and everything's disheveled and your fucking life is chaos. And then you know what? At the end of the day, your fucking bank account is a direct reflection of all of the bullshit that I just mentioned. Okay. So the way that I set up Ambitious a long time ago was there's six life makers. And first you start. Remember that song, Money, Power, Respect? First you get the this, then you get the that, and then you get the money, right? <laughs> Do you remember that song where I'm like really old, fucking little Kim and all that? First you establish your spiritual connection. What does that mean? It means you know, you adopt some kind of meditation practice. You know, in A28P, we have guided meditation. Same thing with um, Ambitious Academy. You adopt a breath work. Same thing. We have all this in Ambitious Academy and A28P. Then you have your Ambitious Abundance Affirmation that you say every morning and every night. Then you bless yourself. You know, I always say my blessing is God, Goddess, Universal Life Force Energy all of my guardians and my guides and my loved ones who are no longer here on this three-dimensional earth plane and all of my ancestors who came before me, fill up my vessel with your light and your love and your ancient wisdom and help me do my work. Help me live life ambitiously. Help God experience himself through me today. Whatever it is, right? And every, every day for me, it's different. And then I go into my intentions. So I sit down with my coffee and my water. And I set my intentions for the day and I write my bitch list, which is the five most important things of my day. And if I get those fucking things done and I cross all those five things off, that is like a win. And then in my planner, I put a big red B, a big red B on that day. And then at the end of the month, I take a consensus and I see how many days were bitch days and how many days were lost days. And then you start realizing, okay, I have seven win days where I wrote a big B on my day in my planner. And then I have fucking, I don't know, 24 or 23 lost days. No wonder why my life is mediocre. No wonder why I'm a basic bitch because none of you bitches out there are, are measuring your success and it's not quantifiable. You're literally spinning in the middle of a room screaming and you're doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result, which is literally just the definition of insanity. And then you're wondering why your life fucking sucks. Well, this is why, right? And then I have a list of my two accomplished things. So those things usually have to do with work or like just little tiddly wing things that I have to do. And then I have my nighttime rituals. And then I have my, you know, pre-bed rituals where I listen to my sound healing and I say my bitches abundance affirmation and I have my skincare routine and, you know, I have a, a like kind of like a, a download sesh with my husband about like how the day was, how, how it can get better. What were the wins? What were the losses? Like, where was I distracted? You know, where he needs help tomorrow, whatever. And that's your spiritual divine connection, right? It could be yoga. Yoga is a great way to get divinely connected too. Then we move into boundaries. And in the way you feel on a daily basis. So if you are just letting people fuck you in the ass with no lube and you are saying no when you really mean yes and you have literally no clear cut concise boundaries and you don't know what you stand for, you're gonna be taken advantage of because that's just fucking human nature. 
And then again, you wonder why you feel depressed and you feel anxious and you feel overwhelmed and, and you wake up every day and you literally say to yourself, this can't be it. This isn't it. And yes, I'm here to tell you, if you are not living life ambitiously and you are not doing the things that it takes to step into your power, then you are not going to live an ambitious life and you are going to die with a lot of gifts unopened inside of you. And you are going to have this hellish experience after you shuffle off your mortal coil of you meet the person you could have been if only you tried, if only you listened to what I'm saying in ambitious. But you always have fucking excuses. There's never enough time. I don't have the money. I'm this, I'm that. And all of this is lies because guess what? If you really wanted something bad enough, you would go out and fight for it. You would put it on your credit card and you would be like, you know what? I know that in a year from now, after I do this thing with Katie or whatever, that I, my life's going to be totally different, that I'm going to be, you know, a multi six and seven figure earner. What, who the hell cares about a couple hundred bucks? But you make excuses and then you wonder why your life is shit. And then we get into the health and wellness. Like, are you doing time restricted eating, which is also called fasting? What are you eating? Are you filling yourself up with nutrients? Are you drinking alcohol? Are you properly hydrating? Are you moving your body every day? And all this is all gone, going into detail in A28P and in Ambitious Academy, all of it. And then we get into relationships. All of your relationships and, you know, sh- whether it's with a significant other or a friend or peer groups or your coworkers or your family, they should all be high vibrational or they should not have a place in your life. But you don't even know that the relationships that you're in are fucking toxic because you're fucking toxic. And you have to hold the mirror up to yourself and say, I can't, I can't keep doing this. And then we get into environment. Like everyone here deserves to have the home of their dreams. And when I come home and I post a lot on, um, you know, I post a lot on Instagram and on my app. If you haven't joined the app yet, you better get over there. The app link is in the show notes. I always post pictures of my home on Instagram, not to brag, but it's like my home is my sanctuary. When I come home, I don't feel like I have so many clients who are like, I don't even want to go home. I fucking hate my house. It's so messy. It's so dirty. It's so chaotic. It's so gross. That makes me so fucking sad. But guess what? They're too fucking lazy and scared to fix it. And you do deserve the home of your dreams and the environment of your dreams. Maybe you have more than one home. I don't know what that looks like for you, but you deserve your home to be your sanctuary and your safe space and a place that feels so high vibrational that it helps you live in that energy of creation and inspiration and motivation. And then after you have conquered all those five things, your spiritual practices, your boundaries and feelings, your health and wellness, your relationships, your environment, then you can be a rich bitch. You can't be a rich bitch first and not have the foundation of everything I just spoke about. And that is where my programs come into play. We go hardcore for 28 days. We revamp your whole entire life in A28P. You should see the testimonies and the changes in these women. And then after you do one round of A28P, we invite you in to the year-long program in Bitches Academy. And then after you do a year of Ambitious Academy, we put you in the Ambitious Alumni Program, which the perks there, and I'll do a, a separate podcast about this down the road, but the perks there are like through the fucking roof. And then and only then do I allow people to do mentorship programs with me. This is the way that Ambitious is running going forward because I know what I do fucking works. And I know that they're just like math and science, it's mathematical and scientifically proven equations that one plus one equals two. And the law of gravity, throw a fucking apple up in the air. It's not going to float off into the fucking ethers. It's going to come down and hit you on the fucking head. And it's the same thing with mindset and motivation. First, you do your spiritual. Then you get into your boundaries and your feelings. Then you get into your health and wellness. Then you get into your relationships. Then you get into your environment. And then last but not least, you become the rich bitch that God put you here to be. Okay. Self-worth. 
So I just said a bunch of shit, everything I meant. And if it's triggering you again, ask yourself why. Probably because you know I'm fucking right. And before I really get into the nitty gritty, you know, I don't sell on my podcast. I don't have sponsors. And the way that we get this podcast out and the way that we get this movement out is for you to be the HBIC and be really a crusader for this ambitious movement. Tag me on your Instagram. Share this with all of your friends. I mean, listen, I know we're living in the new millennium, but like nothing beats word of mouth. If you have a friend who's struggling or that needs some motivation or is looking for some inspiration, point that bitch our way. Like this is how you repay me for showing up here going forward and doing this work because it's hours and hours and hours of my life recording it and prepping for it and putting it out there and emailing it out there and all these things. All I ask in return is for you to share with as many other ambitious women all across the globe so we can really take this ambitious movement in the next phase really going forward to new heights and new levels. And I can't do it alone. I'm, I'm not a ding a I know it takes a whole entire community and I'm, I'm asking my bitchterhood to share it out. Let's grow this movement and let's help awaken as many women on this earth plane as we can. Because if you think about it, if more and more and more of us were living life ambitiously, wouldn't the world be a different fucking place? So instead of bitching about all the things that are wrong with the world, take it and flip it and then push this kind of energy out into the world and share, share, share. Okay. Stop trying to compete with me. Like there's so many coaches out there. They're like, they love what I do and they love what I say, but they're also like in the same arena. And like, listen, that's lack mindset. There's more than enough to go around. I'm not going to steal your fucking shitty clients. Okay. (laughs) I have my own clients that are not shitty. Thank you very much. Okay. Self-worth. Why, why do you have no self-worth? I already explained a little bit before about my word is law and my self-worth depends on it, but I want to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of why. And I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you. So let's break it down. The first reason you have no, no self-worth is what I was saying before, right? You have um, no self-worth muscle built up over time. You've lied to yourself millions of times, probably from the time that you can remember until up till now that you say you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and you don't do fucking shit. You do it for like a day, and then you know you get stressed out, and then you eat a bunch of shit, or you don't go to work out, or you know you say yes when you really mean no, and all the other things that I talk about that are problems that keep you small. So like I said, the first thing we have to establish is my word is law and my self-worth depends on it. The next thing is you don't set yourself up for success every day and it fucking shows. If you're waking up in the morning and you're rolling over in your bed and you're picking up your fucking cell phone that shouldn't even be in your goddamn room in the first place and you start scrolling on social media, you have now given control to the enemy. You have now given over control of your sovereign autonomous self to the dark forces. Because when you go on in the morning and you go straight to the phone, first of all, and I've been really doing a lot of studying on this, when you're sleeping, you are so you're in another realm and dimension of reality, and you're getting all of these amazing downloads from spirit your ancestors, all of these messages and gifts. And it takes time to transmute and integrate those gifts. And it takes time to transmute and integrate all of those downloads that you've received through the night. So that's why when I get up, I never go straight on the phone. I do all my habituals first because Like this morning, I was like fucking writing like a psychopath. It was like God was just like working through me like, whoa, it was crazy. And I know that if I had rolled over and I had looked on my Instagram and I started seeing like the news of the day and everybody's bullshit and, you know, whatever, I wouldn't have been able to channel all those messages this morning from spirit. So like I said before, you got to get yourself some morning ambituals. And, you know, in H2AP, we give you all of these different morning habituals. And then what you do 
is you say, oh, these are the ones that are really, I really like, that feel good to me, that resonate with me, and these are the ones that I'm going to adopt as my own. But how do you know what to do if no one has taught you that this is the equation that works? So you have to set your day up for success. Like I said before, I have a whole morning ritual and whole morning routine, and I don't open that phone, and I don't do any work, and I don't help anyone else, and I don't like speak to anyone else until all of my shit is done, and I have set my day up for success because I am the most important person in my life. And you should be the most important person in your life. And I know you're going to come for me and be like, well, Katie, you don't have little kids and you don't do this. Get up a fucking hour earlier. Go to bed an hour earlier and get up an hour earlier. Or carve out time during your day when your children are at school or if they're with a babysitter or if your significant other takes them. Carve out that hour and do your habituals then. Make it work. No fucking excuses. Stop lying to yourself. The next thing, like I said, you have no habituals. And habituals are not just your morning routine. Habituals are the morning routine. It's what you're doing during the day. It's the way that you're showing up in the world. And it's what you're doing when you're getting ready for bed at night, right? It could be a skincare routine. It could be what you're eating every day. It could be how you're protecting your space and how you're protecting your sovereignty and your energy. It could be Anything that has to do with what is helping you get closer to the end goal, which is whatever for, you know, for everybody, it's different. But if you don't have any habituals, you can never turn those things into habituals because habituals over time compound and they turn into habituals, habits. And habits is what creates greatness. Like I said, if you're waking up every day willy nilly and you're like, oh, I don't even know, I'm just here and I'm like a dust of a plastic bag floating through the wind, then you know what? You're never going to be a firework. I'm just saying. The next reason why you have no self worth is you have no fucking discipline. Like you really don't give a fuck. Like, j- like you know what? I'm so fucking sick of people being like, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm like, then fucking do it. Stop telling me what you're going to do and just do the fucking damn thing. Do the do. If, if everyone in this world just lived in a place of inspiration, like I said before, in spirit, in spirit ration, that's what inspiration means. It means being in spirit. If everyone was just being that light every day, You wouldn't have to worry about how am I going to get clients. You wouldn't worry about how am I going to lose weight. You wouldn't worry about how am I going to find the significant other of my dreams. You wouldn't worry about how I'm going to heal this childhood trauma. Because you would just be doing the do. So when you have no discipline, that equals no self-worth. Because the discipline over time equals the self-worth muscle being built, right? Right? The next reason why you have no self-worth is you are surrounded by a bunch of motherfucking losers. There, I said it. Remember, you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most motherfucking time with. And if you look at your circle of friends and, you, and, and, and it's like not good, you're not in a circle, my friend. You're in a fucking cage and you will end up just like them. If you hang out with a bunch of broke hoes, you're going to be a broke hoe. If you hang out with a bunch of fat motherfuckers, you're going to be a fat motherfucker. If you hang out with a bunch of undisciplined, lazy assholes, you're going to end up just like it. So I'm urging you to find your community. You know, we have our app, the Ambitious app, and we have our different protocols and we have our different um, online academies that are just hundreds of women from all across the globe who are all working so hard to become better, more ambitious versions of themselves. If you're not hanging out with people that are every day waking up and being like, how do I get better? How do I learn more? How do I evolve? How do I go to the next level? Then you're going to, like, if you're not growing, you're dying and you're stagnating, stagnating. Excuse me. That word made me throw up in my mouth. You're stagnating. And if you're stagnant, how are you going to attract anything that's worthwhile? Because you remember, remember, like attracts like. So if you're a bag of shit, you're going to attract a bunch of shitty things to your life. If you're a boss bitch, you're going to attract other boss bitch energy things like more money, more opportunities, more joy, more happiness, better friends, better peer groups, all the above, right? 
So if you're hanging out with a bunch of people that's like, it's okay, treat yourself. Oh, girl, you're not fat. You're just, you know, you just got to lose a couple of pounds. Not a big deal, girl. Just have another piece of pizza. Oh, what the fuck? You're not drinking tonight? Come on. Don't fuck. You're not going to drink with us? Come on. And then guess what? You're like, all right, I'll drink. Fuck. Again, no self-worth. Your word is not law and your and your self-worth does not depend on it. The next thing is you have no spiritual practices. In a bitches, we, we, I am very specific about what I believe are the best spiritual practices to evolve your soul. But I don't give a fuck if you don't listen to my spiritual practices. You may have your own spiritual practices, but you have to have some kind of divine connection. The next one is you are easily distracted. Dude, nothing can fucking distract me. When I'm working, I'm working. When I'm having fun, I'm having fun. When I'm on Instagram and I'm watching reels of like little puppy dogs and a little kid that sings, it's con. Big lot knob with lumps. It's done. Got the juice. Like I'm in it. Like my husband knows. Okay, babe, I'm going to the other room and I'm going to watch reels for like 20 minutes. And I'm just doing that. I'm not checking my email. I'm not watching TV. I'm like just doing one thing. And so many of you guys are so fucking distracted. You know, I use t- different time techniques to not be distracted, but you just really have to put your foot down and be like, when I'm working, I'm working. When I'm having fun, I'm having fun. When I'm in the gym, I'm in the gym. When I'm driving in my car, I'm listening to podcasts. Like, you know, be in the moment and just focus on one thing. Do you know how much work and how much you can achieve if you just focus on this one task at hand? Because every time, and it's been proven, every time you switch your tasks, it's going to pull you away and it takes at least 20 minutes to get back into the flow, into the into the task, even if you were in the flow in the first place. But sometimes you can't get the flow back, right? The next thing is, and um, I love this so much and it's so true, y'all motherfuckers quit three feet from gold. You do. There is a story, it's an old story. I think there was actually a book called Three Feet from Gold, if I'm not mistaken, but pretty much the story is in a nutshell. There was a a man who owned this land and he found a vein of gold and he was like rolling in it. He was just fucking money hand over fist, digging up this gold. It was fucking abundant. It was wild. And then one day, the gold just kind of like the vein ran out. And he's like, holy fuck, what the fuck? What happened to the gold? And then instead of, you know, trying to find it, he was just like, oh, I guess, you know, my luck is over. This is this was all the gold, blah, blah, blah. And he ended up selling this land to some like farmer down the street. And the farmer was a smart motherfucker. So he actually hired, I don't know what they were called back in the day, but people who actually like they're topographers of the land and they find like where there's gold veins and all these different things. And he hired the right people and got the right equipment and they refound that same vein. What happened was the vein of gold like stopped, but then it was like a jump of three feet and then it re-picked up three feet over. But what did the guy do? Instead of doing the right things and, and like, you know, stop being distracted and not giving up and being, you know, persevering and being tenacious, he was just like, oh, ho, hum, the gold ran out. Like fucking Eeyore, go eat some thistle. And guess what he did? He sold the fucking land and the guy that found the other vein of gold that was three feet over ended up making like at that time, because it was about a hundred years ago, the equivalent of, equivalent of billions of dollars. And a lot of you motherfuckers quit when you're three feet from gold. If you just stuck, stuck with it for a couple more minutes or a couple more days or a couple more months, your whole trajectory of your life would change, but you are fucking pussies. And you have no fucking self-worth and you've never done a hard day's work in your life and you've never sacrificed and you've never done the hard things and you've never had to come out of your comfort zones. So we have to stop quitting that three feet from gold. The next reason why you have no self-worth is that your body is a dumping ground and it's toxic and it's poisoned. If you are not doing regular intermittent fasting, and you are not doing extended time-restricted eating, and you are eating way too many refined carbohydrates like white bread and white potatoes and white pasta and sugar and cakes and cakes and pies, cakes and pies, and all the other delicious things, and you're drinking like, you know, it's fucking 
the eve of the new millennium, then your body is 100% toxic and you need a good fucking clean out. And if that's the truth, you need to think about doing something like A28P. A28P will do things to your body that you never thought possible in 28 days. I have women on my A28P program that have lost between 25 and 40 pounds in 28 days. Yes, I said it. And if you want to see the pictures, go over to my Instagram or come over to my app or join my email list when I send incredible pictures and testimonials and exposés on all these incredible women who have done done the, the hard things and who have sacrificed and who have really put the my word is law and my self-worth depends on it into play. Stop looking around like, oh, maybe I'll do the blood type diet. Maybe I'll go keto. Maybe I'll be paleo. Maybe I'll do the 5-2 fasting mimicking diet. Maybe I'll do the pl- Dr. Gundry's plant paradox. Maybe I'll do Atkins. Maybe i uh, shut the fuck up. Oh my God. Do you guys forget who the fuck I am? I used to make bitches hot for a living. I wasn't getting much fulfillment out of it back then because I knew that my life was going into that spiritual realm. But like, this is what I do for a living, okay? So stop making excuses. If your body's toxic, you have no self-worth. If you are overweight, you have no self-worth, okay? And the people that tell you that it's okay to be fat, they're the fat people that don't want you to be better. They want you to be mediocre motherfuckers just like them. And don't come for me because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I will delete your email. Don't even waste your fat little finger time. Okay? Next, you avoid pain at all costs. You avoid pain at all costs. What do I mean by that? Mostly everything in life that's worth having is painful. Okay? Having the body of your dreams means you have to work out. It means you have to lift heavy weights. It means you have to do cardio. It means you can't eat fucking little Debbie's all goddamn day and wash it down with fucking Yoo-Hoo and top it off with a bag of Funyuns. That's not how you become great. It's about eating, you know, clean proteins and organic grass-fed meat and organic vegetables and, and eating the right types of fats that don't cause inflammation like avocado oil and coconut oil and olive oil and grass-fed ghee or butter, you know? So many people come to me, they're like, I'm vegan and I I fry everything in canola oil. I'm like, wow, you're going to (laughs) die. You guys have to understand something. The fucking government and all of these like big pharma people, they want you sick. It's not health care, motherfuckers. It's sick care. Okay. Whatever the herd is doing, go the opposite way. Whatever the 98% of the fucking human population is doing, go the other way. And it's painful when you have to sacrifice, you know, like for years I was, you know, so ripped. And I remember like, you know, getting ready for competitions and like I had to go to birthday parties and all these different things and I could not eat the shit. I would have to bring my own little Tupperware of my chicken and my vegetables and whatever. And people thought I was a mental case, but you know what? I've accomplished more in my 41 years on this earth than most people will ever accomplish in like 72 fucking reincarnations. And I'm not saying that to be pompous. It's the motherfucking truth because I I ran towards the pain and I didn't run from the pain. It's the same thing with building an empire and and creating wealth and abundance. Do you think that I wake up every day and I like play with my pussy and I like smoke Virginia Slims and I like just drink fucking rosé and like eat fucking toaster strudel? No, I fucking get up in the morning and I have my ambituals and I work my fucking tits off all day. And because I love what I do so much, it does not feel like work, but it's, it's still a sacrifice because I could be doing other things. And then I have to work out and I have to eat right and I have to keep my body well. And I want to achieve more and more and more because it's just in my DNA. And it's all hard and it all hurts and it's all painful. But everything that you desire is on the other side of pain. But you are so fucking in a fear spiral and you are living such a mediocre basic existence that the thought of even having any kind of uncomfortableness freaks you out. 
And I'm here to tell you, if you don't run towards the pain, you will never have a 1% life, period. And then that ties into the next thing. Like you love a comfort zone. Comfort zones are called a comfort zone for a fucking reason. And nothing grows from a comfort zone. Nothing amazing and worthwhile comes from a comfort zone. Y'all bitches are just doing the same thing over and over. You know, you're like dating the same guy over and over just with a different face that treats you like shit, that ghosts you, that doesn't, you know, tell you that you're beautiful and worthy and doesn't treat you like the goddess that you are. Your home is like a fucking pigsty. You know, your bank account is like sad. You know, you hang out with a bunch of fucking broke ass hoes. You're surrounded by a bunch of people that just talk the same shit. They're still talking about the time that they did a keg stand in seventh grade. You know, you you have no divine connection to source energy and you have no fucking boundaries. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm literally handing you on a silver platter how to fix your life and you're still not listening. So I, I don't know what to tell you. The next thing is you you don't have any execution. Like, you know what you should be doing, but doing it is the problem. You just have no execution because you don't have execution because you're always wrapped up in emotion and you have to always have execution over emotion. Do you think that every day I feel great? No. Sometimes I have my period and I have to wear a fucking diaper around the house for three fucking days. I still work. I still work out. I still do the things. Some days I'm exhausted. Some days I'm sad. Some days I'm tired. Some days I don't feel like doing fucking anything. But guess what? I say to, okay, this is just an emotion. This is not real. This is not who I truly am. If I can just execute over the emotion, right? It's almost like when you don't want to work out, right? And you, you're like, fuck it. No, I'm doing it. And you go and you get on the treadmill or you go to the gym and you start lifting. In five, 10 minutes, you're into it. It just, you have to just flex yourself that self-worth it is to get over the hump. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, Peter. I'm doing it. Right. So execution always over emotion. And you know, the next thing is like, you're pretty much so used to being mediocre and average and basic that like, you don't even know what it feels like to ever not be that. And that makes me really sad. And I was saying to my husband last week, I was like, you know, I'm just so used to being a star. And I know you're gonna be like, wow, Katie's really bringing it her pompous ass fucking ego. But hear me out. From the time I was a little girl, I always like, I danced, right? I did pageants. I I sang. I entertained. I was in theater. I was on, you know, student government in high school. I always had to speak in front of people. And then, you know, as I got older, I was a coach and a trainer and a motivator. And I had a television show and I've travel all over the world speaking and doing retreats and coaching people and all these things. So for me, I've always been in the limelight. I know what it feels like to be a star. And so many of you don't know what that feels like. So you don't even know like how incredible it could be for you to experience that. And the only way you're going to experience that is if you do all the things that I'm telling you today. And maybe you need to reach out to me and join a program. Maybe you need a month of A28P. Maybe you need to come to Ambitious Academy. Maybe you need to go to Bitchapalooza and be around other women that are doing the do. Or not, or don't, but shut the fuck up and stop fucking complaining about your mediocre basic fucking existence. I'm sick of it. It's annoying. It's old. Cut it out. Aren't you sick of your own self? Like, aren't you sick of your own fucking voice every moment of the day? Like, oh, I just wish, I wish, I wish. Wishing is for losers. Wishing is for motherfucking losers. Speaking of that, the next thing is you're always in victimhood. You're fucking saying, well, she made me feel that way. And this person made me feel unworthy. And I don't feel like enough because this person treated me this way. No one fucking newsflash, McFly. No one can make you feel any fucking way. Only you can make yourself feel that way. Okay? What the fuck? No victimhood. I did a whole podcast. Go back to it. Scroll through. I don't remember what number is, but stop being a lazy bitch and asking me. Just scroll through the fucking podcast and find the victim mentality one. It's real. Victim mentality is a learned fucking behavior. It's learned helplessness. I will not even entertain victimhood speech in my protocols and in my programs and on my app. It just doesn't happen. The next thing is, and I know a lot of you are going to be like, oof, she's, she literally is living inside of my vagina. You say things like, I fell off the wagon. Next Monday, I'll start. 
um, treat yourself, or I have to get my shit together. Or you just give yourself permission that you c- it's okay. Like it's okay. It's okay that I just have this one drink. It's okay that I have this ice cream. It's okay that I just put postpone this work and I procrastinate. You know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. Because you're never going to live a 1% ambitious life if you keep saying things like that. Again, I won't even entertain this kind of languaging in my community. If any of the women in my bitchterhood say shit like that, no, we are going to call them to the motherfucking carpet and we're going to have them take radical responsibility for where they're at. The next thing is you're just a fucking plain old quitter. You've quit your whole life. You've never followed through 100%. You've always done fucking things half-assed instead of doing them full-assed. And that chips away at your self-worth until there's nothing left. And then you end up as a Maury Povich person. Come on. When have you ever given yourself a real moment in time to really create significant change? This is actually why I created A28P. Because there's so many fucking quitters in the world. And A28P is so strict. There's so much accountability. There's so much of a community that you can't fail. Because if you fail, you wasted all that money and all that time and you let all those other people down. And of course, most importantly, you let yourself down. Mostly the people that do these programs with me, they don't end up failing. They always end up succeeding. The next thing is you're around a bunch of liars and you're also a liar. So it's that same vein with it's like when people say like, oh, you're not fat. (laughs) Yes, I am. Yes, I am fat. But I'm working on becoming the best version of myself, right? Like you can change your languaging. Or like, oh, it's okay. Like, you know, making $35,000 a year is is fine. Like money's, money's not even that important. You know who says that? Broke ass hoes. Broke ass hoes say shit like that. And they're lying to you. And then in turn, you're lying to yourself and you're actually saying, yeah, it's okay. It's okay for me to be mediocre and average. Stop lying to yourself. Stop making fucking excuses because excuses are lies as well. I already kind of touched on this, but I will touch on it again. I actually spoke about this on an email that went out a couple of weeks ago in the ambitious community. Like I said, if you haven't already signed up for the email, get on there because it's really great, amazing stuff that goes out every day. And peer groups are so important. Like, I don't hang out with people that tell me it's okay to be mediocre. I just don't. And if they do, I don't fucking hang out with them anymore. Ew. And if they want me to tell them it's okay to be mediocre, then they're not the friend for me. They're not the business partner for me. They're not the colleague for me. They're not the client for me. They're not the anything for me. Whatever. It could be your family. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be your children. It could be your best friend. It doesn't matter. Peer groups are essential. The women that I hang out with are all millionaires. They're doing big moves. They're fucking like stars. They they have a specialized language. They don't talk shit. They don't gossip. They bring a very different energy to the table. And that's why they're my friends. And a lot of people are like, oh, Katie Boyd thinks she's better than everybody. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do think I'm better. Because I've done all the things in my life to be better than the mediocrity and the and the and the low life and the fucking victims and the bullshit. I do think I'm better. And I wish that you would think you were better too. So peer groups are so important. The next one is this is so huge, dude. This is like, I hope you have an aha moment with this. If you're not, if you don't, you're a fucking idiot. You keep confusing the universe. So you guys know, I always post about my garden, even though it's been massacred at least a dozen times by this little fat groundhog that lives in a hole right outside my fence that digs under every fucking day. Uh, And he's just so cute. And I'm just like, here's an all you can eat buffet, Mr. Wentworth. His name is actually Sir Wentworth because he's, you could tell he's like a British man in a (laughs) groundhog's body. So his name is Mr. Wentworth. And I let him eat all my shit. So I just like grow food just to feed the fucking animals, whatever. But you you guys know I love to garden. And I always think about, you know, when you plant a seed and it starts to blossom, right? It starts to come up. The little seedling starts to come up through the dirt. 
you don't see me going into the dirt and ripping it out before it has time to like establish itself and grow into like whatever vegetable or fruit or plant or whatever that I'm growing, right? It's the same thing with you. You're like that little seedling and you're starting to grow and you're starting to do the thing and the universe is starting to hear what you desire and is starting to co-create with you. And then you know what you say? Yeah, I don't want that anymore. I want to do this. Yeah, you know what? This is just taking too long. I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go over here. And every fucking time that happens, your little seedling goes back into the ground. And then there's no fruit. There's no harvest, right? There's no cornucopia of abundance because you are confusing the universe. Because every time you say, universe, this is what I desire. I desire to find the man of my dreams. I desire the body of my dreams. I desire the the bank account of my dreams. I desire to be a digital nomad and travel all over the world or whatever your desires are. And then you like put a little bit of effort in for a couple weeks and then you're like, ah, this is taking too long. The universe is already sending you what you desire because it's co-creating with you in an energetic place. And then you pull the plug and then you're like, wonder why you don't achieve anything And it's because you're confusing the fuck out of the fucking universe. Stop doing that. Make a decision to decide, which means cut off any other option. That's why in your ambitious abundance affirmation, I always have you say there are no other options. I can see, feel, and experience this fill in the blank now. And if you haven't started doing your ambitious abundance affirmation, you need to buy ambitious the book by going on www.kbmsc.com and going to books and buying a fucking copy and learning how to really do your ambitious abundance affirmation. Or maybe you join one of my programs that teaches this step by step and helps you with your ambitious abundance affirmation. But there's got to be no other options. You have to decide, which means kill off any other, other options. And you have to keep at that thing until you achieve that thing. Do you think that I became the person I am because I'm just like one week I want to be a doctor, the next week I want to be a singer, the next week I want to be a horticulturist, the next week I want to be a fucking Michelin star chef? No, I'm Katie motherfucking Boyd. I've always been this person. I've never changed my route. Yes, the things that I had to do had to change to become the next version of who I am today. And I had to let a lot of the old parts of me die so that the new parts of me could be reborn. But the end goal is always the same. So stop fucking confusing the universe and stay the goddamn course. And last but not least, and this is so fucking big, guys, you don't even know what's possible. And what do I mean by that? You don't have friends and peer groups and people in your lives that show you what's possible. And like I always say to all the girls that I coach, if it's been done before, it can be done again. And I always tell people to stand on the shoulders of giants. If you look at my life and you're like, wow, Katie Boyd is killing the game. How do I be not have the same life as me? I don't want you to carbon copy my life, even though that could never happen anyways, because everyone's life contract is different, whatever. But if you say, wow, I would, I aspire to have the life like Katie Boyd has, right? Then you study me and you do the things that I had to do to get to that place. Or you hire me to coach you to get you to that place. Stand on the shoulders of giants. Stop trying to reinvent the motherfucking wheel. It takes too long. I could help you in a month what would take five years to do on your own. And you don't even know what's possible because you've never seen anything happen in the first place along those lines. And that is the fucking problem. Okay. Whew. That was a lot, but I'm not apologizing for anything I said today. This is who I truly am. If you don't like it, I don't care. Don't listen. Just excommunicate me from your life. It's no sweat off of my labia. But if I made you think today and if I sparked your interest and I motivated you and inspired you, great. And like I said, if I triggered you, ask yourself why I'm triggering you. Like what about you is triggered What about you is being triggered by me because you know that I'm right? And have a really stiff conversation with yourself and hold the mirror up to yourself and ask yourself how you can be better. What's next? If you're here and you listen to this podcast, you're just like, yes, 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 yes to everything that I just said. Think about reaching out to me and joining A28P. Our 
H2AP protocol starts every first week of the month. Um, if you're listening to this in real time, and I don't like to time stamp all of my stuff, but if you're listening to this in real time, it's going to be September 6th is the day that this podcast drops. Mercury goes retrograde September 11th. I don't sell anything during a Mercury retrograde. So Mercury is going to be retrograde from September 11th to September, I think, 30th or the 29th. So you have to join Ambitious 28-Day Protocol between now and September 10th. We start October 3rd, the actual protocol itself, but we have a prep week that actually is on the 25th. So we start a prep week, getting all your little doodads that you have to get, whether it's groceries, supplements, um, do some certain things in your home, and you'll get all that information once you sign up. But everyone has to be signed up for this round of A28P by September 10th. But we're only taking 20 people at a time. So we're either going to, and if you're listening to this today, it might already be sold out because we already had a wait list that we put up in August. And I think we had about 50 people on that wait list. I'm obviously recording this early. So I, um, we're almost, we're actually almost sold out at this point. But if you miss October 3rd's launch of H28P, we'll have another one in November and another one in December. Now, after you do a month of H28P, what's next for you? Then you go into Ambitious Academy, which is even a more upgraded program. H28P is about forming the foundation of your ambitious life. And in 28 days, you're not even going to recognize yourself at the end of that month. But then what happens is we do something outrageous like a 28 day protocol. And then what do we do? We go, ah, we, we're good. And then you go back to your mediocre average life. The next step is Ambitious Academy, and that's a 12 month program. So A28P is a 20 person program. Once we hit 20 people, we close it down. And then those people go on a wait list for the next month. It's $544.44 for that month. If you have already done the old A28P from like 2019, it is not the same thing. It's a totally upgraded, upscaled, next level experience. So if you're like, oh, I already did A28P and it was great, but like, I don't need it again. Yes, you do, because it's a totally different experience. And then what you want to do is you want to think about going into Ambitious Academy. It's a 12 month program. Ambitious Academy's 12 month program is $444 a month. That's in installments for 12 months. Or you can pay in full for $4,444. And what you get in a Bitches Academy is no one in the industry is giving and doing and showing up the way that I am in that community. And last but not least, there are still two spots for January's Bitchapalooza. You can pay in installments or you can pay in full for a discounted rate. And like I said, once the Bitchapalooza that is going to be on January 3rd, no, I'm lying to you, <laughs> January 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2023, it's going to be the most life-changing event you've ever been to. I had a girl the other day was like, $1,444 for three days. I'm like, honey, if you even know what's going to be, you would pay a million dollars for it because it's going to be that fucking incredible. And what we're going to be offering that weekend and all the fucking surprises that I have in store for you, let me tell you, it's if you're not coming to this, you're fucking missing out. You are truly, truly missing out. So those are the three things that we're offering right now in Ambitious Land. So H28P first, then Ambitious Academy, and also Bitchapalooza, which is January 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2023, okay? If you have any questions for me, if you have any comments, head on over to Mighty Networks to my Ambitious app and ask away there. You have um, an incredible community over there of all these wonderful women from all across the globe who are all truly trying to live life ambitiously. And if you're craving that community, that bitchterhood, this is for you. So I know that this podcast was a little bit longer than the, my normal podcast, but I really felt like I had so much to say after being away for so long. 
and I wanted to bring the old school CNX Tuesday ambitious Katie motherfucking Boyd energy. And I think that I succeeded in doing that. And I'm just really looking forward to the next phase and the next level of all of our lives. And you have everything that you need inside of you right now to be ambitious. You just have to do the work. You just have to go inside and do the work. Okay. All right, guys, I'm signing off. Don't forget to stay ambitious. Don't forget to share this with all your people. And I will see you next Tuesday.